Hi guys, uh, today our speaker is Professor Jack Manscott from uh, Trinity College, Dublin, Ireland. He's going to speak about topological correlators of n equal to 2 uh, Young Mix theory. And uh, uh, thanks, Jan, for uh, accepting the invitation to give this uh, review talk or talk. So this is basically the 95th talk in the series uh, and we are welcoming you uh, from our end so you can start. Okay, thank you uh, Sayantan, thank you very much for the invitation and organizing all these wonderful lectures uh, in this, uh, this time. Um, so I plan to talk today about the topological correlators of n equals star to star young males theory and this talk is uh, is mostly based on on, uh, on the paper which came out in in April. Uh, it was joint work with Greg Moore. You see here a picture uh, where he was speaking on a, on a similar topic, and a few other uh, related papers uh, were the papers by uh, George Corpus and uh, and myself in 2017, and uh, papers from 2019 with uh, with Greg Moore and Yuri Yudayev, and also a paper with Xin Yu Zhang in 2019. Um, so just to, to start out with a, a rather kind of, uh, elementary uh, motivation, uh, correlation functions are at the very heart of, of quantum field theory. I have uh, portrayed it here. We have a correlation function of, of n correlators, which are inserted at, at n different, uh, possibly n different positions, x1 to, to xn. And the, we, we uh, calculate these typically using a, a path integral um, uh, as uh, pictured on the, the right hand side where the, the curly x stands for all the fields in the, the theory. And there's a very large um, effort to include all the perturbative and, and no perturbative uh, effects in these correlation functions, as well as to increase the number of, uh, of, um, of, of, uh, of, of insertions of field observables. Uh, so this is a important motivation to, to study uh, theories where these effects can be uh, included, as well as many other uh, physical um, uh, phenomena can be studied, uh, such as uh, symmetry breaking, confinement, um, etc. So, Jen, I just have a small question. So, here mm -hmm. you have mentioned perturbative, non perturbative, but what is the parameter for this? Um, it will be the, the coupling constant. So yeah, there will be a, a coupling constant dependence in the in the action. Okay. Um, which um, yeah, very very good question. Um, which which can be either perturbative or, or non perturbative. Okay. So just another question. Like here, you have written some endpoint correlation function. So as you okay. increase the n, do you expect it will be more perturbative or non not more non perturbative? means in the higher point correlation functions, the perturbative property and the non-perturbative property that will be more dominant or subdominant? Um, that's a good question. Yeah, I think the dependence on that, that coupling constant parameter is, is yeah, it will be quite dependent on the specific field theory you're, you're looking at. So the very um, dependent phenomena. Yeah, but you can ask questions about the, the kind of the dependence of, of, uh, of, of N also, how, uh, how do these correlation functions grow? For example, if you take the same field insertion O at different positions, uh, how does this increase with, with N? Um, one of the questions we, we ask ourselves. And then you can, yeah, you, you might get a, in a sense, a non-perturbative answer in, in N, I suppose. Sure. Okay. Um, okay, so in, in this uh, talk, we will consider topological quantum uh, field theory, um, in which we can basically get very far with this kind of, of analysis. Um, but the caveat is that, that in a topological theory, the topological theory is independent of the metric and for that, and therefore independent of, of, uh, of, of distances, uh, relative distances, and therefore it will be independent of the, of the positions of the, of the observables. So we get 
um, on the one hand, we can compute more, but maybe um, uh, we are missing out on the on the position dependence of the, the observables. Um, so this, um, so as I was saying, the, the exact analysis is is possible in a topologically twisted theory. Um, I will discuss it in more detail a bit later, but these are in particular the n equals two and the n equals two four uh, young males theories. Um, and in these these uh, these uh, these cases, we find that the exact results do connect to the geometry of, of four manifolds and the um, geometry of, of instanton modelized spaces, um, as well as as analytic number theory. So it's in that sense also an interesting subject since it connects to many subjects in uh, in mathematics, and um, we can kind of use input from those those subjects also um, to in the uh, for the for the physics. As I said, I will focus on a, on a theory known as n equals two star uh, Young Mills theory and, and restrict to gates group SU2. Um, and the, the main aim of our project was to, to evaluate observables using the so called low energy effective uh, field theory of this, uh, of this theory. Um, and what is special about n equals two star is, is that it, in a sense, uh, interpolates between uh, the two well known theories, the so called pure. N equals two theory, where we just have the n equals two uh, vector multiplet, and the, the n equals four theory, where we have the n equals two four vector multiplet. I will say a bit more about this um, later. And we'll see that this 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 theory has a superconformal manifold because it's a deformation of, of n equals four Young Mills. And as a result, the observables of the theory are a function on the on the conformal manifold or a function of the um, um, of the of the UV uh, coupling constant. Okay, so let me uh, spell out a little bit this this theory in a bit more more detail. The n equals two star theory is uh, is, the, is the following theory. It consists of n equals uh, the n equals two vector multiplet, um, which con then consists of an SU two connection A mu, and an adjoint uh, valued complex uh, scalar phi uh, for the bosonic fields. And it, um, it involves an n equals two hypermultiplet whose uh, bosonic fields are the, the scalars Q and uh, Q tilde dagger. And these are also in the adjoint representation. And we include a, a mass term for this hypermultiplet with mass um, M. Then the, the theory has the following uh, global symmetry. There's an SU two R symmetry, which basically comes from uh, rotating the n equals two two the two supersymmetries. Um, and I should maybe mention that this, this mass term, uh, the mass M, uh, if it is non-zero, non then it breaks the n equals four supersymmetry to n equals two. So uh, otherwise you would get an SU4 symm R, R symmetry, but now we have broken the, the supersymmetry to n equals two, we get an SU2 R symmetry. And in addition, there is a, um, a baryon symmetry or U1 baryon symmetry which rotates the, the bosons here from the, the, the hypermultiplet. Q goes to e to the i phi times Q, and Q tilde goes to the e to the minus i phi times Q tilde, uh, such that the vector here, in fact, is also uh, rotated by e to the i, uh, I phi. Um, so what are the, the parameters of this, this, this theory? Well, one is the, the UV coupling constant. Um, I said it was a it is a deformation of a of a superconformal theory. So we have a UV coupling constant tau UV, and I introduced the parameter Q UV is e to the two pi i times tau UV. Notice this Q here is completely different from the Q here, which won't appear that uh, that much after this this slide. So please, uh, I hope I'm using Q as a as a as a parameter and and for the the bosons, but I hope the, they're sufficiently different that there is no um, confusion in uh, this notation. Um, in addition, we have the, the mass already mentioned here, the mass of the hypermultiplet. Uh, there's also a minor dependence on the scale lambda of the theory. And as I will discuss in a bit more detail later, uh, the, there is a, um, a phase of the theory where the, um, where the SU2 gate symmetry is broken to, to U1. And this phase of the theory is, um, 
is parameterized by a complex parameter u, which is the, the trace of, of phi squared. So if this trace is, is different from, uh, from zero, then we have broken the, the theory, the, the, the SU2 gates uh, symmetry to, uh, to a U1 gate symmetry in the effective field theory. Okay. Are there any, any questions about this? If you have any question, please ask. If not, we proceed. Um, Okay, we'll continue to the, the next slide. So I, was, uh, I already alluded to the N equals to star uh, theory interpolates between uh, two well-known theories, uh, which are the, um, if you take the mass to zero, we get, uh, we get again the, the N equals four supersymmetry. Um, whereas if we take the mass to infinity, then the hypermultiplet uh, decouples and we should do this in a controlled way. So we take this, this combination Q, QUV to the power one quarter times M and keeping that combination fixed, call it the, the, the that will be the scale lambda of the, the, uh, of the limiting theory. Uh, then the N equals two star theory becomes the pure N equals two theory without any um, hypermultiplets. Um, Okay, so now before continuing, I need to introduce some, some special functions because it, as it turns out, uh, many of the, the observables and, and quantities of this, this theory, um, they are ex in, uh, expressed in terms of, of, of modular forms and uh, modular functions. Um, so let me just briefly introduce these, um, these, the, these functions. Um, we have the, the following so-called Jacobi theta series, which are, um, we have uh, three of them uh, for this talk, theta two, theta three, and theta four. They are a function of the, um, of the parameter tau in the upper half plane. And it's simply a sum over uh, integers shifted by, by a half, a q to the, and then we have a parameter q um, um, to the power n squared um, over two. So let me, uh, q, is here e to the two pi i times the parameter tau. And um, uh, moreover, then for theta three, it is just a sum over integers and for theta four, there is a minus one to the um, n inserted. Uh, there is another variant where we in can include um, so-called elliptic parameter. So we can include say an elliptic parameter z here, will appear a bit later and we get e to the uh, two pi i times n times uh, z. So then we have a, a two parameter uh, function um, with this uh, z uh, variable. But if there's only one variable, then it is this, uh, this series. Okay, now in addition to this, um, starting from these, these uh, so-called Jacobi theta series, we can uh, determine or we can define the half periods uh, E1, E2 and E3 which are simply sums of these Jacobi theta series to the power uh, theta three uh, to the power four, okay? Um, and these, these functions, um, they show some remarkable uh, properties. Uh, one thing is that we can, because the, the exponents are basically integers or, or fractions, we can make shifts of tau, tau to tau plus one, and we get some phase. The functions are multiplied by a phase if we do it for theta three, then uh, theta three becomes uh, theta four. Uh, and a much more non-trivial transformation is this, uh, is the inversion. If we um, change tau to minus one over tau, we get um, on the right-hand side after uh, some calculation, the for Poisson resummation formula, you'll find that this uh, becomes the square root of minus i times tau times the theta four of tau. And for theta three, you have a similar uh, relation where in fact you get back uh, the theta three. Um, okay, so these, these transformations we can express in terms of uh, SL to Z matrices. The, the first one here, you would write it as one, one, zero, one. And the second one as, as uh, one minus one, zero, zero. 
Um, and so what we what we see is that in, in fact since theta two goes to theta four, um, these are the two generators of SL two Z. But since uh, theta three goes to theta four and to the theta two goes to theta four under the inversion, uh, we if you restrict to a subgroup of SL two Z, then we get uh, transformation. Then we get that the functions transform uh, back to themselves. So this is the so-called the, the congruent subgroup known as as gamma two, um, where the A B uh, C and D are such that A and D are equal to one modulo two and B and C are equal to zero uh, modulo two. Okay, so, um, so this is a, a subgroup of the, the group of, of integer two by two matrices with determinant uh, one. Okay. Are there any, any questions about these, these functions? Any questions, Dennis? If not, we we'll proceed. Right. Okay. Okay. The, so, uh, um, an important development was uh, in the in the nineties when uh, Cyber and Witten uh, wrote uh, down for a number of, of theories the the so so called Cyber Witten solution, which provided uh, a fully the a solution to the low energy effective action including all the non-perturbative um, effects. And for uh, this n equals two star theory, that, that, uh, that solution takes the following form. So the solution is, is written in terms of an elliptic curve written here. Um, it's a defining equation in, in, a, in a two complex uh, dimensional space parameterized by y and x. And uh, we get y, y squared, for, uh, uh, a point on the curve is, is, uh, is uh, is on the locus of this, this equation where y squared is equal to the uh, the product from one to three, j is one to three of this, this combination x minus ej as function of tau uv times u minus one over four times ej tau u of tau uv times m squared. So u is the, the order parameter on the on the Coulomb branch and these ejs are the precisely the ones, the, the half periods uh, defined here. Um, okay, so the the effective uh, the effective coupling constant of the, the low energy effective uh, theory is corresponds to the to the complex structure of this uh, of this torus. Um, so that's that's how the relation between between tau and and, and u comes uh, comes comes about um, in this uh, in this perspective. And the singularities of the, the, sing, the when this curve is, is singular, that corresponds to the singularity of the effective field theory, uh, where, um, where uh, a massive uh, particle, massive uh, multiplet uh, becomes massless and therefore the effective field theory um, is, no longer, uh, is no longer accurate, it becomes, becomes singular. So we can see where are the singularities of this curve if we determine it, it's, uh, it's discriminant. Discriminant takes the following form, delta is equal to u minus u1 times u minus u2 times u minus u3, uh, where uh, u1, u2, and u3 are equal to just the combination m squared over four times these half periods, uh, e1, e2, and e3 respectively. Okay, so we see that the following singularities, one singularity is if, is if we take uh, u2 infinity, then the discriminant uh, blows up. And we'll see in more detail later that this corresponds to the, the limit where tau goes to the UV coupling constant uh, tau UV. Um, and in this limit, we reproduce the n equals to four theory. In a sense, you can see, see that the, if U goes to infinity, then the mass is becomes arbitrarily um, light compared to U. And so you go to the, in a sense, the massless limit, you, you reproduce the n equals to four. If we go to one of the others, to the to U1 singularity, uh, we have the tau goes to I infinity, weak coupling limit. And this is where a, a quark uh, becomes massless. And then there are two non-perturbative uh, singularities, strong coupling singularities, U going to U, U2, uh, where tau goes to zero and the monopole becomes massless. And um, U going to U3, where tau goes to, uh, to one and the, the dion becomes massless. So these are familiar singularities also from the, the pure SE2 theory. Um, 
you have studied it. Okay. Um, now from this, this curve, we can determine, uh, we can actually write this, this u as, uh, as a function of, of tau and, uh, and tau uv. And you can basically see these, um, these, these relations. Um, and so you find for u the following expression. It's a little bit uh, complicated. You get some combinations of these thetas and, uh, and Jacobi theta functions and the half periods. Um, but one thing you can, can see is that if you send tau to tau uv, then the denominator here uh, goes to zero. Uh, so that then we see that the u is in fact um, uh, does, does diverge at that, that point. So we can say that u is a so-called B modular form because it's a function of both tau and tau uv. And we see that it has weight two in tau uv because that's the, the weight of the thetas will, will cancel and then we just have the weight of, of E2. Uh, and has weight zero in, in tau. Um, it transforms under gamma two if, if an element of gamma two acts separately on tau and tau uv. And it, it transforms under S up to Z if it acts uh, simultaneously. Okay. And similarly, we can have an expression for, for delta, uh, which it takes a more compact form. Um, and this is in a B-modular form of weight six in tau uv and zero in, in tau. Okay. Are there any, any questions? Okay. Um, so since the, the function is, is invariant under the gamma two um, symmetry group, it is natural that, uh, that we, that we um, to define U on a fundamental domain um, of, uh, of the upper half plane modulo, uh, modulo gamma two, then this function is, is one to one. This is the, the fundamental domain for this, this group uh, gamma two, it's the red, uh, red domain. Um, and so we have these, these two uh, free cusps here, the, the two strong coupling cusp, and then we have the, the weak coupling cusp at infinity. Um, and at the same time, so we should be careful because uh, we have a singularity here if tau goes to tau uv. So for that reason, we, uh, we remove an epsilon neighborhood from, uh, from tau uv. So that's, that's usually not the case if, if one is considering just the regular uh, modular forms, but uh, but here we have these bimodular forms. We should exclude that uh, that one. Okay. So then, in a sense, rather than, than working with the to parameterize the theory as function of, of u, uh, or to parameterize the columbrance as function of u, we can also work with this this uh, this uh, rigorously defined fundamental domain for tau. I should add that these these boundaries, the vertical boundaries, are identified. And then this arc is identified with this arc and this arc is identified with, with that arc. So it is really um, a four punctured uh, sphere uh, similar to the, the U plane. Okay. So let me um, continue and, and say a little bit more about the special geometry of this N equals two star uh, theory. So on the, in the symmetry broken phase, the, the um, the field phi, as you do field phi, takes, can be brought to this form, the diagonal form with uh, zero off, um, away from the diagonals and then a minus a on the diagonal. And so then u is proportional to, to a squared. And the full solution can be uh, obtained from the, the prepotential f, which takes the following form. It has a classical part one half times tau uv times, times a squared. Uh, then there are a few one loop uh, logarithms and then we get an infinite series of, um, of, uh, of non-perturbative uh, terms, uh, which are, is, is are ratios of M over, over A, and powers of, of M over A and uh, weighted by functions F uh, sub N. Okay. Now it turned out that these, these F sub N, they are quasi modular forms and they can be determined iteratively using a, a recursion relation um, and uh, a gap uh, condition. Okay, so this, this, this could be done after the, the cyber written uh, solution was, was written down. 
um, and the, I should add that this, this gap condition is in fact over, over determined. So it's, it's in a sense, it's striking that there is a solution, um, but that's the case. They are, yeah, you can determine them just on the, on the computer term by term. Um, okay. okay, so now in, in fact, we will use um, a slightly different viewpoint in, in, uh, in a big part of the, of the talk. If we view this, this theory as an n equals to star theory with a rank two gauge group, um, SU2 times U1, rather than just the SU2, um, but where the U1 sector is, is frozen in a sense. So we, we, fix, we will fix the, the fields it will be convenient for us to fix the fields at the at specific um, specific values. So then in the, on the, the Coulomb branch of this theory, we break this symmetry to U1 times U1. And um, in general, you would parameterize then this uh, U1 times U1 field theory by scalar fields A with superscript running from one to, to two in this case, or one to, to N if you have uh, N U1 uh, multiplets. Um, and in, in our perspective, this, the, the first one is, is just the A I was already um, um, talking about on this slide. Uh, and the second one is the, is the mass M. So we, we view the mass as a, as a scalar field of, a, as, an, uh, as a ref or a scalar field of a, of a, of a U1 multiplet, uh, but it is this frozen, it's not, uh, not dynamical, but it will be uh, quite useful for uh, what follows. So since we, we think of, of, uh, of M as a scalar field of, uh, of a vector multiplet, then there is also um, a field strength in that vector multiplet. That's the, the F2. Okay, so F, F1 is the, the field strength of the, the vector multiplet of, the, of A1, which we abbreviate to, to F. But then there's also a second flux uh, F2, which will be important um, as we go on. Any questions? Any questions? Okay. Yeah. okay. So this is, I should maybe add, uh, it's an idea by, by Nelson and, and Cyborg from um, many years uh, back. Okay, so basically for this, this reason, the number of, of observables uh, doubles in a sense, in particular, um, I'm not sure whether people are familiar with this, this notation, but there is a, an observable AD, which is, which, uh, which is equal to the, defined as simply as the derivative of F to, to A. And um, this is the scalar field, which, is, um, which comes with the, the dual photon. So if we would make a, an electric magnetic uh, duality transformation, then uh, this field strength F would go to its, its dual field strength. And, and then we, the, the scalar field which would come with that field strength is, is AD and in terms of the prepotential and the, the original A is, is just given by DFDA. We can do this for the other observables. So there's also a dual mass MD, which is then the FDM. And normally the AD and, and A, they, they form a so-called local, local system. They transform under these, um, I should say these, these gamma two matrices. If we, if we loop around these, these singularities on the, on the U-plane or singularities of the, of the theory, that's why it is called a, a local system because they, they might change. Uh, for example, AD can go to AD plus two times A if you go uh, around the, the weak coupling um, uh, singularity. Okay. But now, since we are viewing the theory, theory as an uh, SU2 times U1 theory, we get a four dimensional vector with MD, M, AD, and A, and we can determine uh, monodromy matrices uh, with respect to the, to the singularities. And I won't write them down here, but they are available in the, in the paper. Um, and from that, you can then kind of determine the, you can determine the, the monotomies of, of other observables in the, in the theory. 
So for example, other observables are the effective coupling uh, tau, which already appeared earlier. In terms of the prepotential, it's the second derivative of f to, to a squared. Um, we have a parameter v, which is the second derivative of f to a and m. And we have a parameter psi, which is the derivative of f to, to m squared. You can say this is the, the coupling uh, the coupling to the to to the other u1 multiplet, much like tau is the coupling to the to the su2, the effective coupling of the su2 uh, multiplet. And we found some some striking identities using the the exact result for the the prepotential or the the results for the prepotential in terms of the the fn. For example, if we define a coupling c as the exponentiated psi, then you can by by simply checking large a expansions. Um, you can verify the following relation, namely that it is equal to theta one. Um, I should say theta one is, is one of the Jacobi theta series, um, much like as, as I introduced them for theta two and theta four, but just with a, with a minus one um, insertion in addition um, for, for theta two. So we have theta one with modular parameter two tau two, elliptic parameter two tau v divided by theta two of tau uv and theta four of, of two tau. And a similar relation or a related relation is the following uh, relation for the ratio of theta two and theta three with arguments uh, two tau for the modular parameter and v for the elliptic parameter. Um, this is equal to theta two of two tau uv and theta three of two tau um, uv. So we, this is an RG independent combination because here on the right hand side, there is no, no dependence on, on A, no dependence on the mass. Um, whereas on the, these tau and V, they do depend on, on, uh, on A and the, and the mass. So it's, it's quite a striking relation that if you take this, this combination, then all that dependence has magically uh, disappeared. And uh, normally we've, Normally, two tau. If you have a, just a Jacobi theta series, the, the modular argument and the elliptic argument are are different, are are unrelated. So you get a two complex dimensional space. Uh, but here we work on the the one dimensional columbrans, and this we see from this identity that certain combinations are are excluded, which um, which will be more relevant uh, later. But for example, these e to the two pi i times v can never be equal to minus q to the power n over two. Um, because if you would insert that here, then this will be independent of this. Uh, you would actually be able to divide out this, this ratio or, uh, or it will be equal to, to zero in fact. And, um, and it should be then, so then you can never satisfy the, the right hand side. Okay. Okay, are there any, any questions about this, these aspects? Any question? If not, you proceed. Okay. Um, so I just have a question. What this, uh, so this derived identity, the C, what this C corresponds to at the end? What it physically interprets? Um, well, you, you can think of these these as, as, as coupling constant. Usually in these, these theories, if you have a u, uh, u1 to the n, you would write coupling constants uh, tau ij uh, with i and, and j running from, from one to, uh, to n. Mm -hmm. um, so in, yeah, you can think of, of v and xi just as, as, as elements of this, uh, this coupling constant uh, matrix. And, and then in a sense, uh, so, so Q is equal to two pi I times uh, tau. And um, so then this, this C is in a sense very similar to the E to the two pi I times tau, which will, um, um, which, which the Q will appear naturally if you exponentiate the Young-Mills action. Uh, for example, you get the instant, you get Q to the power um, K, where K is the instantal number of the, of the young mill solution. Um, and we will see that something similar is happening because C 
So you can you can think of C as as uh, as a or C is to xi what what Q is to to tau, and um, so uh, we get Q basically Q um, is exponentiated to the the flux squared um, in an instant solution. And, and therefore, we will get something like uh, C uh, to, uh, to the F2 flux uh, squared. Okay. Uh, I hope you're, I'm not confusing yourself, uh, confusing you, you here, but, um, but on, an, on an instanton, we have that F that star F um, is equal to basically F, F that's F, which is then the instanton number uh, K. Up to up to signs, but um, but in fact, because this is just quadratic, it is also um, actually. Let me say that it's it's equal to the instanton number kappa, which is equal to 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 k squared, where k um, yeah k k basically um, is bas basically the um, f. Um, Representative of F in the, the cohomology letters. Um, does it clarify it a little bit? Yes. Um, okay, I will. Um, another question. So, mm -hmm. writing all the formalism in terms of writing in terms of this uh, elliptic theta functions or maybe the half periods. Makes simpler, or it's just just kind of notation you are following. Um, well, actually, it, it, it makes it makes an uh, it makes the exact analysis possible in a sense because if you if you would just work with the the prepotential, the the the, pre, the, the prepotential is just a large A expansion. Yes. Um, and so. If we, um, so we get uh, tau is, is the second derivative of f to, to to a squared, you would also get tau as a large a expansion. It starts with tau uv, and then you get the large large a corrections or inverse powers of, of a. Um, so you would um, you would not be able to see these these kind of uh, modular transformations where you send tau to minus one over over tau. Well, you, you don't know what's 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 going to happen to these 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 functions. Uh, but if if once you are in in this once you you are confident or that that c is equal to this, then we can use these these modular transformations of the of the Jacobi theta series. To determine what this this coupling will look like near near the other singularities. Thank you, Professor. Okay. Okay. So this this was um, some discussion about the the um, the effective uh, theory of of n equals two star. Now um, our aim is to to evaluate the the the, the partition function of this theory on uh, on a compact uh, four manifold. So I have to to um, introduce some aspects of, of four manifolds um, uh, before uh, continuing. So we have a um, a four manifold X and sorry, there's a, a Z here. Um, the middle the middle cohomology. Uh, provides an intersection form uh, just by integrating differential forms, uh, differential two forms, and this this intersection form is is, is integral and it is unimodular, so the, it has determined plus or minus uh, one. A lattice, this lattice can have um, um, is not necessarily positive definite; it can be have positive and negative uh, directions. It has signature b two plus uh, b two minus. Um, and um, we are will, uh, in particular, deal with manifolds uh, where B2 plus is equal to one. And in this case, let us let J be the normalized generator of the unique self-dual direction in H2. Um, 
where it is self-dual with respect to the to the hot star. Okay, so this this is the the hot star depends on the metric, so that the metric will will induce a specific value of uh, of um, the, the period point or this this two form j. And it is normalized, so it's its norm is equal to one using this uh, quadratic form, and then it provides a way to project a general vector k and l to the to that uh, positive definite uh, direction. So k plus is then the just the inner product of k with j, and then multiplying with with j. Okay. Um, okay. Now, for simplicity, we will assume that that x is, is simply connected, meaning that the, the pi one of x is zero, such that there are also the, there are no one cycles or three cycles, and uh, then one can can show that uh, correlation functions of these these theories um, are only non-vanishing if b two plus is is uh, is odd. Okay, so. So since we are interested to, to, de to determine something non-vanishing, non um, we can restrict to this case that B2 plus is, is odd. Uh, B2 plus is one is then uh, um, one of them. And uh, it will be important for us that such four manifolds admit an almost complex structure uh, on the tangent bundle of, uh, of X. Okay, so this is a, a, a result from differential uh, geometry. It would be quite, quite useful for us that these these four manifolds, that basically the four manifolds for which the correlation functions of this theory is, is non-vanishing, uh, they do admit an almost uh, complex structure. Um, okay. Um, okay, so we, we want to formulate this, these theories on, uh, on, on an, preferably on an, an arbitrary four manifold. Um, but an arbitrary four manifold uh, does not always allow for, for a spin structure. So let me review a little bit the, the spin structure and then the, the so-called spin C structures, which do exist on an arbitrary four manifold. Um, so the, the spin four group is just a product of, of SU2 and SU2. It's a double cover of, of SO4. And in addition, we have the, the spin C4 group, which uh, are the elements of U2 times uh, U2, um, but whose determinants are, are equal. So this is a more general, larger group than, than spin four because the, the determinants of the different elements uh, does not need to be equal to, to one. Now we said that the spin structure on X is a principal spin four bundle, which is compatible with the tangent bundle TX. Uh, where compatible means that basically the transition functions of the, the spin four bundle provide us with uh, transition functions on the tangent bundle. And similarly, a spin C structure on X is a principal spin, uh, spin C4 bundle. Now, as I said, the spin structure does not always exist on a four manifold and the abstraction is, the, is what is known in, in the math literature, the, the, the Stiefel Whitney class. The spin structure only exists if the, the second Stiefel Whitney class is zero in H2, the middle cohomology uh, with K coefficient set two, but any oriented four manifold admits a spin spin C structure. So this, I realize this, this is a little bit abstract, but we will connect back to this uh, this the, these fluxes uh, associated to the to the mass M uh, a little bit bit later. Um, um, okay. Um, so now let, let W plus and minus be the two chiral spin bundles. So as you to left and as you to, um, to right, or in this case of the spin C bundles, U to left and U to right. Uh, then the spin C uh, line bundle is the, is the line bundle, is, is, is the determinant of these uh, W plus and, and W minus. And then we can uh, talk about the the churn class of this, this line bundle, which is in uh, H2x uh, over the integers. And we, we call the, 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 the churn class 
of this, uh, this line bundle also the characteristic class of the spin C structure because it, the W plus and W minus are determined once the, the spin C structure, uh, once you choose the, the spin C structure. So the S, S denotes the, the spin C structure. Maybe I should write that, that here. This is the, the frac S. Okay. And now we have the following result that uh, C1 of S or this, this uh, characteristic class of the spin, spin C structure uh, is equal to the, the second Stiefel Whitney class modulo uh, elements of uh, two times set. So there it's, it's W2 modulo two times the cohomology class, even cohomology classes. And we will introduce also this notation Km, which is one half times the, the characteristic class. Okay, so this, this is basically the flux of, this will, this will be the flux of this, uh, this F2. Um, the F2 I was uh, mentioning a, a bit earlier. Um, sorry, this, this, this F2, the, the flux of this F2 is, uh, is the Km. Okay, I would like to add one more, more thing. We, earlier we mentioned that, there, that these, the, the manifolds of interest uh, do have an almost complex structure. And if you, if you have an almost complex structure, then this uh, gives rise to a canonically determined spin C structure. And uh, um, the way it goes is, is, uh, is, is like this, the, is the structure group of, of X uh, if there is an almost complex structure, then the structure group of X is reduced from SO4 to uh, U2. Um, so we, that, uh, by, that directly gives us a U2 bundle. Um, so we have a principal U2 bundle on X uh, and which induces a canonical principal spin C bundle because then we can take the, the determinant uh, just in, in this way. Um, and so this, this spin C bundle, from this perspective, the spin C line bundle uh, is then uh, equal to the so-called canonical bundle. Um, and by Hitchburg, Riemann, Roch, the, the square, if we, if we square the, the, the churn class of the canonical bundle, uh, Kx squared, this is equal to two times the Euler number k of the four manifold plus three times the, the signature sigma of the, the four manifold. Okay. So we see that we will find that we can basically uh, define these theories for an arbitrary spin C structure, but that there is a canonical, uh, there's a canonical one associated to the almost complex structure for which many results uh, simplify. Okay. Um, so why am I discussing all these rather formal um, aspects? Well, assume that X is, is spin such that then we have uh, chiral SU2 bundles SU2 bundles are well defined. Uh, then we can uh, do the so called Donaldson Witten twist of the theory, which means to replace one of the SU2 uh, factors of, um, of the rotation group by that of the diagonally embedded subgroup of SU2 plus times SU2R. And then phi and A mu remain a vector and, and the scalar, as in the, uh, of the, the vector multiplet, because they are. Um, they are scalars under SU2R. Um, um, but Q and uh, Q tilde dagger, uh, they become a space-time spinner because they are singlets under SU2 plus, but they are uh, spinners under SU2R. So if you take, if, uh, if, if you take the, the, the diagonal subgroup and uh, and make that the SU2 plus, then we get a, they become a space time spinner M with an alpha alpha dot. So if we do the Donaldson Litten twist, we get spinners on the on the four manifold, but this is problematic because uh, spinners are not not well defined on the um, not well defined on on, on, on non spin uh, four manifolds. So the the remedy is then the following uh, to to couple the hypermultiplet to the, the spin C line bundle, uh, such that W plus is a well-defined well spin C bundle. 
usually physicists um, uh, write it in the, the following way: S plus is the is the the spin as you do spin bundle, which is uh, poorly defined, is not defined on a non-spin manifold. At the same time, the square root of the line bundle is not well defined on a non-spin manifold. But if you take the product, then the uh, the signs in the core in the transition functions um, combine uh, as desired, and so the the product is is well defined. Um, okay, I said the W plus is, is well defined, and in fact, by if if S is canonically determined by an ACS, then W plus corresponds to um, the the bundle of of zero forms plus the bundle of uh, anti-holomorphic two forms, whereas W minus corresponds to the um, anti-holomorphic uh, one forms. Okay, they they are always well defined on uh, on arbitrary uh, oriented. Um, for manifold. Okay, so this 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 coupling the hypermultiplet to a spin C line bundle that's what we that's that's what we will do with that extra uh, flux of the the extra U one multiplet. Okay. Okay, so the the Q fixed equations are the adjoint cyber Witten equation which I uh, spelled out here. It's the self dual component of F, and then a combination of these. Um, um, the combinations of the of the bosons, the bosonic spinner fields of the hypermultiplet, and a, um, a spin C Dirac um, equation. If if, um, if X is scalar, this this was um, um, and since in the, in the context of topological field theory is a rather important point, if X is scalar and S is canonically determined by the ACS, then these, these equations, one can show that they are equivalent to the Q-fixed equations of another topological theory, namely the buffa witten theory, which is a a priori different twist of the integrals for young mills. And it is written in terms of a real scalar C and the self-dual free form uh, B plus. Um, if X is not scalar, then one can kind of relate the equations or compare the differences, and one finds that the difference is written in terms of the so-called Nyenhuis tensor and the exterior derivative of the the one-one form associated to the metric, which is uh, which is closed if X is scalar. So then d omega is, is zero, but um, not necessarily otherwise. Uh, nevertheless, if as, as I will explain, if we go on a little bit. Um, our analysis um, gives reasons to believe that the n equals to star ACS twist actually gives gives rise to identical partition functions um, um, to the the Waffa witten uh, theory. So we would get the same signature also. Um, okay, so one way to, to see this is to, to, to study these, these equations in a bit more, more detail. Um, you can determine the, the modelized space. The dimension of the modelized space takes the following form. For an arbitrary gauge group G, it would be equal to the dimension of, of the gauge group times the, the, the class of the spin C structure squared minus 2 chi plus 3 sigma. Um, and the notation here is that K is the instanton number and mu is the so-called Hoft flux and S is the spin structure. Um, and we see that it's a... Uh, um, uh, we see that, that that if we choose the spin structure to be determined by the ACS, this is special because then this is combination is equal to, uh, to zero. Um, I will often abbreviate this combination to, uh, to L um, because it, it, it appears quite, quite frequently. Um, and this, this, these equations have uh, different loci. One is the instanton component where the, the spinner fields are zero. So that's where these then these terms are, are not there. And we get just the instanton equation F plus is equal to zero. Um, and we have an abelian component where F is, is diagonal and M alpha dot is, is strictly upper or lower uh, triangular. Um, Okay, so then the, the topological observables are equal to um, 
um, or the R U, the the order parameter on the Coulomb branch, and uh, and the surface observable is I um, of X, where X is the, the two cycle on which we integrate this this combination. So phi is a scalar, f is a two form, and after twisting the psi's become uh, one forms. So this is a a two form which we naturally integrate over over x. Okay, so maybe just to indicate the these correlators then from a from a UV perspective, um, is we get something like here on the on the right hand side. Um, here we get an an, an inter the, to the the different terms are weighted by QUV to the power of the of the instanton number, and there's a certain power of, of m. We get an integral over the the two components of the of the moduli space, and um, then we get an, an uh, integral of, of differential forms over these, these modelized spaces. And the differential forms, they are built up from um, omegas, which are corresponding to the observables. Uh, U is a, is a four form. U has an omega associated to it, which is a four form. And the surface observable has a, um, a form associated on modelized space, which is a two form. And we get uh, churn classes, which are churn classes of the of the matter bundle over the the moduli space. That's those are induced by the hypermultiplet. So we get schematically this uh, this this, uh, this this form here. Um, so we see that in the massless limit, if you take the massless limit, then the observables disappear, basically because of these these powers in, in M, and we just we are left with an integral of the of the top churn class over the moduli space, giving us the, the Euler number. Uh, whereas if we take the infinite mass limit, then the, the churn classes disappear and we are just left with the integrals over the, over the moduli, uh, the, with, the, with the differential forms associated to the, to the observables. Um, and for a generic mass, we get, we get uh, both uh, contributions. Um, okay, so this is the, the in a sense the, the UV uh, perspective, and in particular, this uh, if if it is S is associated to an ACS, then these term class are really the term class of the tangent bundle of the modelized space. We get the Euler numbers of the modelized spaces, um, which are also the what is derived in, in Lafayette theory. Okay, so in the following, I will proceed by basically evaluating this the same results or the same uh, observables using the effective uh, field theories, but more, uh, it's more, more, more physical. Uh, but are there any questions about this UV perspective? Um, okay, so let us uh, return to the, the effective field theory. So the, the effective field theory has, has proven very powerful to analyze and evaluate correlation functions and it led, for example, to the abelian cyber rhythm equations and invariance. And for B2, um, uh, we are interested for manifolds of B2 plus, plus effect equal to one, because then the Coulomb branch contributes to the full uh, cyber rhythm solution and the full cyber rhythm solution of the theory enters, which I was reviewing at the beginning of the talk. And to set up the, the path integral, and all it provides an interesting testing ground for the analysis of the, the Coulomb branches. So kind of schematically what we, what we get is that an observable O can be written as an observable, as a contribution from the, the U-plane or the Coulomb branch uh, plus a contribution which has delta function support um, on the singularities on the, on the U-plane. And I'm and the following will be particularly interested in this, this contribution from the, the U-plane because that's where we, um, we, we, um, um, we need to integrate over the, the full, full Coulomb branch and really understand the, the, um, all the contributions um, in detail. Okay, there is a uh, very nice derivation in, in the more written paper that the, the path integral um, on the 
on the U plane reduces to an integral over the zero modes. So we can drop all the all the derivatives and, and simply integrate over the, the zero modes. And I will usually, so for AMU, it just becomes a sum over fluxes, over the fluxes F, then uh, phi zero is, is A, and then we have these still some fermionic fields, which I won't discuss in detail, but you can read about it in the, in the paper. And usually I will denote this, this U plane contribution as follows, we have a phi, where J indicates the, the metric dependence, uh, mu is the so-called at whole flux of the gauge field, and, um, and then for the observable O. Um, okay, I think I already mentioned most of the things which are on this uh, slide. Um, okay, so if we, um, since the integral becomes an integral over, over zero modes, we can simply reduce the Lagrangian. We can um, um, uh, ignore all the terms with, with space-time derivatives in the Lagrangian. Lagrangian takes the following forms, and in general, the form is this topological term tau ij fi which fj plus a q exact term where q is the, the scalar uh, supercharge after twisting. Um, and if we work this out and um, ignore the terms with uh, space time derivatives, this becomes as follows. We get a tau bar with the, 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 the self dual components of the field strengths and uh, tau ij with the negative components of the field strengths. Then there are some auxiliary fields d, uh, di and dj. And we get a term with uh, referments. As I said, we will uh, freeze the, the two fields in this, um, this Lagrangian, where f2 is the flux which uh, couples the hypermultiplet to the spin c structure necessary to make it well-defined. So f2 is equal to four pi times km. And then another um, kind of freezing is the auxiliary field is equal to F plus um, the self-dual part of, of this. Okay, then we get a, a full sum over, over the U1 fluxes of the, of the, of the, um, of the, the unbroken U1 gate symmetry, which takes the following form. So here I've, I've spelled it out. We get the sum over K in the, in the lattice um, and um, so here we get, then the exponentiated action takes the, the following form Q to the minus K minus squared Q bar K plus squared, since tau bar couples to F plus and tau couples to F minus. And we have also these uh, couplings here, which, which are the couplings, um, you can think of them as, as tau one, two, which is an elliptic variable. So this is uh, V DF DADM times the flux uh, km. So that's how also where we see that km appears. And then as I mentioned earlier, uh, tau 2 is xi leads to the factor c to the power uh, km squared. Um, okay, are there any, any questions about this part? Any questions or comments? If not, you proceed. Okay. Um, so this is the this is basically what what one gets from this uh, considering this this Lagrangian and uh, freezing the the two component and summing over the doing a full sum over the the one component uh, of the of the fluxes. Uh, in addition, there are topological couplings. In addition to this Lagrangian, there are topological couplings. So you don't see them in this, this Lagrangian, um, but they can be derived from a different, different perspective. Um, and they are of the form A to the power chi and B to the power sigma, because those are chi and sigma are the, the topological uh, quantities you can get from, um, um, from the, the curvature. And, and A and B take the following form. Uh, B is written in terms of, of delta, the discriminant of the cyber curve we saw before. 
and at A is, is written in terms of a derivative uh, du dA, which we can also determine explicitly. Um, so then we get the following um, integrand. Um, we get a term, then the measure is dA wedge dA bar, then A to the chi B to the sigma C to the Km squared. And we get the sum over fluxes. And I've normalized the sum over fluxes in such a way that there is a term d tau bar, d a bar uh, coming out. And then using all the monotomies and all the duality transformations, you can uh, show that this is a single valued or, or well-defined on the U-plane, as long as this Km corresponds to a spin C structure. If you would, if you are on a non-spin manifold, like the, the complex projective plane, and you set Km to zero, the integral is not, uh, not well-defined. Um, so th this is yeah, one manifestation that we see we have really have to, to couple the theory on a non-spin manifold to, um, to a spin C structure. And this already appears for, for very basic uh, four manifolds like the, the complex protective plane, which is non-spin. Non I should say that back in the 90s, there was a paper by Labastida Lozano which uh, precisely considered uh, the spin case and worked with the, the case that Km is equal to, uh, to zero. Um, but even if the, the manifold is, is, is spin, um, we get an infinite set of uh, basically of, of theories uh, because for every different choice of, 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 uh, of Km in, in H2, you get a different integrand with, with different, uh, leading to different observables. Um, okay, now one, this, this already suggests, of course, that, that this one is, is pulled out, that, that we should do a, a change of variables uh, going from, uh, from A to, uh, to tau. And, and indeed, in, in the beginning of the talk, I was showing the domain for the Coulomb brands in terms of the, of the tau variable. Um, so then we get the, the following uh, integral. Um, we get an integral over this, this, uh, this domain, this, the, the red domain I was showing in the beginning of the, the talk uh, called u epsilon. We integrate over d tau with d tau bar. We get some measure mu uh, of tau and tau uv. I won't spell it out here. Uh, the fluxes, again, the fluxes psi and then insertion of observables um, O. Okay. Um, any questions? Okay, so we, we aim to evaluate this, this integral using uh, Stokes theorem, um, meaning that if we just abbreviate this whole integrand to, to omega, then the integral of, of omega, we want to write it as an integral over the, over the boundary of little omega, where d omega is equal to, to capital omega. And this is in fact possible using um, mock model of forms for arbitrary uh, four manifolds. So that was the basically the, the content of the of various recent uh, papers. Um, but before going there, we can already deduce some properties uh, of, the, of the integral or the correlator uh, without uh, explicitly evaluating these, uh, these, these integrals. So a few of those, those properties are, for example, the um, S-duality transformations. One can deduce that phi mu j transforms as a modular form in the UV coupling constant tau UV with this, this weight minus chi of x over two minus four times L. So note if we, if we work with the case that the spin C structure is determined by an ACS, then L is equal to, uh, to zero. And um, um, now in order to, to kind of display the duality transformations, it's useful to make these so-called SU2 and SO3 partition functions in the following way, because they're an SU2 partition function with flux mu and then the SO3 partition function um, is the sum over all the fluxes. Um, and there are two versions of this, an SO3 plus and SO3 minus, which differ by uh, this quadratic term in the host flux. And uh, so we have, this is the definition of the SO3 minus uh, partition function. Um, then we can make the following duality diagram for, um, uh, for these, these, uh, these theories. So SU2 
an SU2. The SU2 theory is mapped to itself under T transformations. Under S, it will go to SO3, SO3 plus. And then if you do a T transformation, we go to SO3 minus another T, SO3 plus, SO3 minus, and, and back to SO3 plus. The fluxes differ by this second Stiefel Whitney class divided by two. So in particular, if we are on a spin manifold, um, then this SO3 minus is identical to this SO3 minus, and you get the, the, the diagram collapses to just uh, three nodes rather than, uh, than six nodes. But on a non spin manifold, you get this uh, diagram with uh, six nodes. And it's, in a sense, it's striking that this is um, the diagram is identical to the one for, uh, for Rafa Witten theory, which again. Uh, while it is for, well, we derive it for n equals, suggests that, that the n equals two star um, theory um, gives rise to, to identical results for than those for Waffle Witten theory. Okay, so that's one aspect you can uh, derive without evaluating the, the path integral. Uh, but just from the integrum, basically. Another aspect which can be derived is the so-called holomorphic anomaly. Um, this is a function of tau uv and tau bar uv. So we see that, I'm sorry, we see that phi is a function of tau uv and tau bar uv, where the, the tau u bar uv uh, dependence is maybe a bit uh, unexpected since the tau bar uv dependence is q exact. It's meaning that if we take the derivative to tau bar uv, you find the q exact um, insertion in the, the correlation function. And usually these, these, as usual, q exact observables give rise to a total derivative in, in field space. And then the usual argument is that, that, that there's, you don't get a contribution from, from infinity, but we will see that there is a contribution from infinity in this case of P2 plus is equal to, uh, to one. Um, and they come from uh, reducible connections, which in fact do not, uh, which, which in fact do exceed the instant bound. So they are, they are not really BPS, but they are uh, exceeding the, the bound. Um, we can do this for the various cases. So let me just uh, fix here X to be the, the simple project plane, complex projective plane. And let us choose a spin C structure, which corresponds to an uh, ACS, KM is three over two. And if we determine the, the tau bar derivative, uh, then we get here on the right hand side this this there's this this prefactor, and then we get um, uh, this this combination, the theta some theta function with argument tau bar u v sorry I missed the tau bar uh, divided by the power of the, the eta function. So this is identical to the holomorphic anomaly of of Alpha Witten theory, and see also for Recent work in this direction, the paper by the Bolkar, Putrov, Witten, and uh, Bonelli et al. Um, we can do this for also for a different choice of spin C structure, for example, Km is a half. Then we get a slightly different uh, form of the anomaly where, uh, where we get E2 hat, the uh, completed second Eisenstein series multiplying uh, theta uh, and the different power of eta, which is not so important. Um, and we can also consider a correlation function. Let's consider a one point function for the observable u. Uh, then the result and, and take km to be equal to, to three over two. Uh, then we also find this um, second Eisenstein series. So this, this one should be compared with, with this one. For the partition function, we just get, get theta. But for this, uh, if we insert um, just the field u, then it is multiplied by uh, e2 hat. Okay. Um, okay, let us then uh, proceed by evaluating this, this integral. For this end, we need to do some, some more work. We need to, to find the function g hat, capital G hat, uh, such that its uh, anti-holomorphic derivative with respect to tau gives us the, the sum over fluxes. 
And an important requirement is that it is regular on, on U. So in particular, G hat, uh, we can find such functions um, using the theory of Jacobi mass forms. Um, and if we take the, if we, if we, um, we can ignore the particular, the specific non-holomorphic or anti-holomorphic, uh, which depends on the anti-holomorphic observables, just like we had here with the um, anti-holomorphic part in, in tau uv. Um, then we find that these, these g mu are, um, um, are meromorphic as a function of, of v. So let us, let us fix x is equal to p2. Then we find for this, uh, this the meromorphic part of these, these functions, the following, we get, a, we get this, this part of the less so-called less Arpel function, um, overall factor one over theta four, and then a sum over all the integers minus one to the n, q to the n squared minus one over four, and uh, divided by one plus e to the two pi i times v, q to the two n minus one. So it's, it's meromorphic because we have this denominator as poles um, if we allow V to be to vary independently from uh, Q. Um, and similarly, so this is for Km is equal to a half. We can also do this for another spin C structure, the, the usual three over two. Then we get a slightly uh, different one. So the, the main, main point is here that we, we can have poles for these denominators, but I was, um, discussing all the way back in the beginning of the talk that there were, we, we were able to, to, um, to, to show that some of the combinations of V and tau are, are excluded. And in this way, we are precisely excluding, these are precisely sufficient to exclude the, the poles which are the zeros of this, this uh, denominator. Okay. Um, so this is actually quite an important, important con con constraint for, for us. And we, we actually, we, we don't have a formula for arbitrary KM. We have, we have determined the ones for a half and then three over two, but it seems actually quite a tricky problem for arbitrary uh, KM. Okay. Are there any, any questions? Um, okay, so having these, these functions then we can we can evaluate this. Um, let me just scroll scroll back a little bit. We can precisely evaluate this this integral in this this manner. The boundaries of the theory are the the boundaries around the cusps, as well as the boundary around the the tau uv uh, singularity. And for the manifold like uh, the complex projective plane, the the only contribution is from the tau uv uh, singularity. So that then we find the, the following uh, the following result the following table I made the, the Q series so I, uh, I slightly um, uh, normalized the the integral by just getting rid of the the eta the power of eta functions basically and the observable u is slightly different that's why there is this d um, but then we get the following uh, Q series if we don't this this n is then the the number of, um, of observ observables inserted. If we don't include the observables, we get this uh, series, which is a generating function of the, of the class numbers. Um, familiar from the literature. And if we include an observable, we get a different, um, we get a, a different, different Q series with different uh, coefficients. Okay, so we get, we see all these of intricate uh, generating functions by just by we, we got from uh, evaluating this this integral. Um, so this the partition function the the correlator without observables is identical to the the partition function of the the Waffa witten theory. And another thing to mention is that if we take the the leading terms here, if we take the limit to the pure SU two theory, then all these the only the leading terms are, are important. At most, the leading terms are important. And we reproduce the, the Donaldson invariance from uh, the Donaldson or Donaldson Witten theory. So, in particular, this um, the Donaldson invariant for n is zero is, is one. 
this one will, this whole series will go to zero in the limit. This series, we will just keep the, the leading term 19 over 64 as the Donaldson invariant. Uh, this series will go to zero and this series will go to 85 over 512. So this is, uh, this was again for this uh, choice of spin C structure. We can also do the, the other case KM as a half. Then we find uh, different uh, generating functions. Um, and um, so these, these numbers, the interpretation of these numbers are as I was discussing. Um, in the earlier, as I was discussing in the, in the UV case, and sorry, someone is, is adding something to my slides. Okay, I only noticed that now. Um, um, so the adaptation is in terms of these, these integrals over differential forms over the modelized spaces. And we see that the, in, the, in the limit, if we take the limit to the pure theory, then the answer should be independent of the, of the choice of the spin C structure. And that's indeed the, the case. This, this leading term, Please the ask, term that- it, Somebody raise their hand. Please ask a question. Please ask, unmute yourself and ask the question. Wasim, please ask the question. Somebody raised the hand and didn't ask him the question. Okay, please, you need to proceed. Okay, thank you. Feel free to interrupt if there are any questions. Um, and we see that, so this, the, the limit is indeed independent of the value of, of KM, at least for these two, two cases. Um, this, this leading coefficient here is the same as the, the leading coefficient here. For the second line, the, this goes to zero in the limit. Um, so, it, um, so in that sense, uh, it also confirms the expectation. Then the, the, for the third line, we have here 19 over 64. And here we have 19 over, over 64, so that we get the, precisely the same value and the same happens say in, in, the, in the fourth line where we have 85 over 512 and uh, 85 over 512. So we, we find, we reproduce the, the Donaldson invariant independently of the choice of, of complex structure. Um, okay. Are there any, any questions about this? Okay, so this is the, so far the, the discussion about the, the contribution from the, from the U-plane. As I mentioned in general, there's also the contribution from the, the Cyberquitten contribution, which are contributions from the, the uh, with delta function support on the singularities of the, of the theory. In this case, J is one to, to three. Uh, the terms on the right-hand side, now there's an important phenomena which allows us to deduce these, these contributions um, from the U-plane contribution um, in terms of the so-called the cyber um, invariance. And this is the phenomenon of, uh, of war crossing. So if we vary the metric J, then phi, this, this integral phi will, will in, in general will, uh, will, will change, the, the, the result will, will change and it will change at every point of, the, of all the, the boundaries of the, of the integration uh, domain. But the left-hand side is only expected to change due to the, the weak coupling or the, the, the singularity at, at tau uv. So the, the, the change of phi, uh, has to be absorbed by the change by the wall crossing due to the cyber written invariance of the cyber written contributions. I see again someone is, is adding uh, something to my slides, which I'm not doing myself. 
Okay. Um, okay. So we get in that we get the, the following formula that the, if we if we cross a wall from say going j plus to j minus, um, then the 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 change due to the the singularity j uh, should be opposite to the change of the we get from the cyber quit um, invariance. So this this makes it then possible to since we know this this uh, this term uh, precisely, in fact it's quite easy to it's it's, it's easier to to evaluate than the evaluation of the, the full integral because it becomes um, q exact in a way similar to the to what we did for the holomorphic anomaly. Um, um, we can determine these, these cyber gradient contributions. And then because of the topological nature, we can extend to the results to manifolds with B2 plus uh, large than one. Okay. So this is the, are the, the typical results we, we find. Um, we get different, different terms for the different topological quantities. This is a minus chi h, chi h is chi plus sigma divided by four. Um, L is the this term is due to the spin C structure. Um, and lambda is the two chi plus, plus, uh, plus three sigma. So in particular, when L is equal to zero, this uh, confirms results, uh, earlier results in the, uh, in the physical and, and math uh, literature. Um, okay, so the contributions from the other singularities, they have a similar form. And in fact, they match the expectations of, of, of S duality. Um, the, basically, the S duality diagram I was showing earlier. And we can also include uh, observables or exponentiated observables to, uh, to get expressions to arbitrary order in the, the number of, of observables. Um, OK, so this brings me to the, the end of the talk. Uh, let me briefly summarize. We have explicitly evaluated and analyzed the partition function correlators of the n equals two star theory. Uh, the theory interpolates between the, the Donaldson Witten and the, the Waffa Witten uh, topological theories. And uh, to formulate a twisted n equals to star theory on a four manifold, x extra data such as the spin C structure is, is necessary. That's one of the lessons we, uh, we learn and we have to, um, we would need for, for other uh, theories. Uh, and the analysis motivates the study uh, and the explanation of, of U-plane uh, integrals of, of other uh, theories, which is uh, currently work in, in progress. Um, thank you for your um, attention. Thank you, Jen, for your talk. Uh, guys, please unmute yourself and give a clap for Jen for giving such a nice talk. And you can ask the question if you have anything. Sir, can you tell about what is ACS? Uh, you mentioned earlier. Mm -hmm. What is the meaning of ACS? Oh, the, 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 it, it is abbreviation for uh, almost complex structure. So it's a, it's a structure you can, it's a special structure which, uh, which, which is available on these four manifolds. Uh, which is not as strong as having a complex structure. It does not need to be uh, integrable. Um, but we have it available on these, these four manifolds. And then having an, an, an ACS, we can uh, naturally, uh, it naturally give rise to a, to a spin C structure, which is necessary to, to define the, the n equals to star theory on these, these four manifolds. Does that answer the question? Nilesh, did you have understood? Yes, sir. Thank you. Aradita and other people have any question? Everybody is silent. Robin, you have understood everything? No, sir. I don't understand everything. But a little bit. 
so I'm able to ask questions. Yeah, you will look, look into the talk once it will be posted. You may ask Jan later also because he's, you just type his name, his email ID, everything is available. If you want from me, I can also provide, you can ask him directly. And yeah, like Aradita and other people like Shopnamoy don't have any questions. I think not. Everybody is silent. Immediate question. Immediate question. You please ask. No, no. There is no immediate question. There's a no. Immediate question. <laughs> oh. Okay. Thank you, Jen, for your patience and giving such a nice talk, and which I believe will be very, very helpful for all of us, those who want to work in this direction. And uh, this will be posted in my channel and I will share the link with you. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you very much for the invitation. Yeah. I joining the talk. I suggest students to write to Jan after listening this talk. That will be helpful for, for all, uh, all of you. If yeah, you feel free to, to get in touch with any questions you may have. Sure. So I hope you have enjoyed, though we haven't asked. Particularly, I haven't asked many questions, many, uh, maybe students hello, hello, hello. I have asked, but yeah, I asked. <laughs> okay. Any, hello. Uh, uh, do you have any question, Kwasi? Yeah, yeah, sir, I have a question. Yeah, please ask then. Uh, actually, I don't have a question. I have uh, a request for you, sir. What? Request, request, request. I can't able to hear anything from you. Request. I have some request for you. Can you repeat what you have told again? I'm saying, uh, just like the Professor Jain gave a beautiful lecture here uh, about this uh, super symmetry. But I'm saying, uh, can you please bring uh, Edward Witten in the next talk? We'll be very pleased. Uh, here is lecture. I didn't have understood. Then he uh, was asking any physics question or anything. So, sir, I'm not asking any questions. I'm saying, uh, just like Professor Jam has given a beautiful lecture. Uh, similarly, can you, uh, uh, will you please request uh, Sir Witten to give a talk here? Okay, okay. Yeah, I have requested him also, but he's busy. Like, I always ask people, once they are free, they used to ask, give me their consent and then I organize. I usually contact them two months before or one month before. Uh, Jan immediately agreed. That's why this talk happened. Uh, but uh, yeah, like, I try to manage to get people uh, from different, it's just not only restricted to uh, any particular topic. It's, this forum is not made for any particular topic. So it's like general. So we prefer to call quantum field theory, string theory, gravity, condensed matter, particle physics, and everybody. Okay, thank you, sir. But yeah, like uh, if you, anything, uh, any specific question or anything, so you can write to me. I can do okay. okay? Uh, no questions, no questions on this topic. Thank you, thank you for replying. Oh, thank you. Okay, Jan, sorry for continuing. Uh, so ho uh, hopefully right now you are very tired to give such a long talk. <laughs> so have a nice coffee and have a nice time. So, uh, like uh, most importantly, all of you stay safe and healthy. That's very important. And uh, yeah, I'm finishing the talk right now. So bye bye. Yeah, thank you. Bye bye.